So that was uh, a rendition of an original, a 1962 World's Fair song. And uh, may I tell you what, uh, the 1962 World's Fair, what an event for Seattle. And that is the uh, most iconic statement of that event. 1961, they started uh, construction on the Space Needle and they completed it in less than eight months. And it opened up for the World's Fair April 21st, 1962, celebrating its 60th birthday. Joining me now, the uh, host and chief history officer of Cairo Radio, Felix Bennell. Always good to have you. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Good morning. Happy, so, happy 60th birthday, Seattle World's Fair. Yeah, happy, <laughs> happy uh, World's Fair anniversary. So uh, the Space Needle is a world-renowned landmark anywhere in the world. You know, they know what the Space Needle is. They know where it is. And it's really amazing to think that it started out as a sketch on a napkin, and then it evolved into what it became. And they got that thing built really, really quick, didn't they? Yeah, it was about, as you said, about eight months long. And the, the Eddie Carlson, who's one of the uh, one of the leaders of the World's Fair movement that started in the late 1950s, he had dinner at a place called the Fernsehturm in Stuttgart, Germany, which is a television tower that has a rotating restaurant on it. And that inspired him to think about this idea of some kind of upward pointing symbol for the fair, because the World's Fair is this incredible mix of old buildings. If you look closely at Seattle Center, there's buildings from the 20s, 30s, and 40s that were repurposed for that 1962 fair. And you can't really tell the difference. And then there's these amazing modern things like the Space Needle that has become the symbol of Seattle. It was a symbol of the fair, and it was exciting. And there was a restaurant up there, and you know, cocktail lounge, and people like Elvis Presley went there, and all the different celebrities who came to the fair went to the Space Needle. And I don't think people realized right away how that was going to become the symbol of the city. But here we are, 60 years later, and it still looks modern and futuristic. The rest of the city still hasn't caught up to that incredible tower. I, you know what? You are, you are so right. And it wasn't just the Space Needle. I mean, there were so many installations that were built, like the, the Science Center, for example. Those, those spires there are pretty iconic as well. Yeah, exactly. And the uh, architect Minoru Yamasaki, who later designed the World Trade Center, designed the Pacific Science Center. That was all funded by the federal government. We had unprecedented federal support to build a science exhibit. It was right after the Soviets had launched Sputnik. And so the United States was trying to catch up with the space program. And what better way to do that than to create this big science exhibit to inspire kids about the future? That's why you had John Glenn visiting with a space capsule. You had Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet uh, cosmonaut, visiting. It was this incredible crossroads. And you can, you'll hear a lot about the World's Fair, I think, this year for the 60th anniversary. And there's no way to exaggerate or overstate what that event did for the city and for the region. It captured people's imagination. It took Seattle, which wasn't exactly a backwater in 1962. You know, Boeing was here. We were doing things. We were engaged with the world. But most people didn't know where Seattle really was. And 10 million people came to that fair over the six months it was running. There was a carnival ride, you know, lots of carnival rides. There was fun food like Belgian waffles. But then there was a serious meaty stuff like science and really great cultural stuff like operas and ballets created Seattle Center. That's, that's the hidden part of the fair. A lot of people say it was... Uh, the construction of a civic campus disguised as a world's fair. So when the fair was over, it wasn't as if the carnival was just packed up. All these great buildings, like what's now Climate Pledge Arena, like what's now McCaw Hall, they were all left there, and they're still vibrant. There's all sorts of things going on. I was at the Space Needle last night, you know, talking about the anniversary, and there's a Kraken game going on. There's, I think, a ballet was going on. It's still this incredible crossroads that got going 60 years ago and is still going strong. That's a really amazing thing. We should never take Seattle Center for granted. It's just crazy what happens there every day, year-round. Absolutely. I, I love geeking out with you on stuff like this. <laughs> uh, Felix Bennell. My uh, former Lake Washington High School classmate, always a pleasure, my friend. Go Kangs. Go Kangs. <laughs> you better believe it. Hey.